all right folks so now we are in study area number two okay study area number two it's basically what is it what is it what does it say can i have a look okay identifying substances identifying substances now in this chapter what you're going to be doing is you're going to be be given an introduction to analytical techniques okay analytical techniques so these are techniques which chemists um, or scientists use to analyze substances okay so the methods are basically either qualitative or quantitative so most of the time the methods are quantitative because we want to know what is inside of our sample okay so these are the various methods that we will be exploring right these are the various methods that we will be exploring uh, paper chromatography uh, hplc gc UV visible, mass spectrometry, infrared spectroscopy, NMR spectroscopy. So these are all the various types of things that we'll be looking at. The part on spectroscopy we will do later. Okay, so what I want to do with you first is what we call as chromatography. Okay, so chromatography. So we're going to skip this part first, uh, then we're going to do this part because it actually I, it comes with chromatography first. Now, when we talk about chromatography, there are many chromatographic techniques. There is something called paper chromatography. There is something called thin layer chromatography, column chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography, which is also known as high pressure liquid chromatography. And there is gas liquid chromatography, which is also called GC. Okay, among all of these methods, right, the methods which are primarily used in the laboratories today are these two methods HPLC and gas uh, and gas chromatography so for analytical methods right like for example when you go and give your blood or uh, you want to analyze uh, contents of your blood or your urine or things like that these either one of these methods will be used the rest of the methods that you see here these methods are either more uh, rudimentary primitive they are not very commonly used methods okay not very commonly used but having said that this method thin layer chromatography is a method which is used by students or chemists to identify certain things like the mobile face now you may not know what a mobile face is now but i'll explain it to you later then you have column chromatography column chromatography is also used by chemists to uh, when they have a large amount of sample to make it into a smaller amount uh, you can use column chromatography all right so you want to you want to separate the components components first but I, I think I've gone ahead of myself so let me just explain to you what oops let me explain to you what chromatography is in the first place before we even look at all the various types of chromatography okay so what is chromatography actually okay so here we go so let's look at this now chromatography what is chromatography chromatography okay so what is chromatography now one very important thing about chromatography is it is it is a separation separation technique okay it's a separation technique now what what do you mean by separation technique so let's say um you have obtained a sample you have obtained a sample and in this sample there are various components let's say there is a there is b there is c there is d there is e there is f there are there are five six different components in this mixture so this is called a mixture okay this is a mixture because it is made up of six different components okay made up of six different components so this is called a mixture so what scientists want to do is they want to study uh, a component like for example let's say they they want to study a they want to know the structure of a they want to know the chemical compositions of a what is a made up of what are the things that a reacts with uh, what are the things a dissolves in so to be able to study A, A has to be separated from the rest, okay? So what scientists would want to do is they would want to separate all of these things individually. That's the ideal situation here. We want to separate all of this so that they all become individual, right? For example, D 
and then you have E, and then you have F. So if you're able to separate all of this into individual components like this, then you can study them better. So what is chromatography? Chromatography is a separation technique which is used to separate a mixture, which is used to separate a mixture into its component uh, compounds, okay? So it's used to separate, okay, as a separation technique to separate a mixture into its various components, okay? So to separate them. So the, the reason why we do this is so that we can study those individual components separately. It's like, for example, you are in a class, there are less, each teacher will have 25 to 30 students in the class. We can't get to know you very well. So if we separate you into individual rooms or times, then we can get to know you personally better. Yes? So it's something like that. So that's chromatography. Okay? So how does chromatography happen? How, how do we achieve this? Okay? How do we achieve this? So to explain this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example. So the example is, let's say we have a mixture and the mixture is made up of A and made up of B and made up of C, okay? So what we're going to do is um, we are going to separate just these three uh, components. But let's say this is A, okay? This is A. Um, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, let's say this is A. All right, let's say this is A. Now, on the surface of A, there are all these various groups, CH3, uh, let's say CH2, CH3, um, let's say there's another CH3 here, let's say there is another group, uh, let's say, um, let's, let's make things simple, let's say we have another CH2, CH3 here, okay? Now, all of these groups that you see on this, on the surface here, these are all hydrocarbons, all right? Hydro hydrocarbons. So this makes A to be non-polar, all right, non-polar. So non-polar meaning it doesn't carry any charges on it, okay. So it's, we call this non-polar. Then let's say we have, uh, let's say we have B, right, we have B. B on the other hand has these groups sticking on it, okay, it has these groups, okay. Okay, if you remember previously, so these groups are considered to be, let's say, polar. So when I say polar, right, so what will happen is this part is slightly negative, this part is slightly positive, this is slightly negative, slightly positive, slightly negative, slightly negative, slightly positive, slightly positive, slightly negative, slightly positive, slightly positive. So if you notice, B is polar it carries all of this negative and positive things so this component is identified as polar all right so then let's say we have another component uh, let's say this component is uh, let's we call this c c has some ch3 groups it has some oh groups uh, it has some of this ch2 ch3 groups all right um, and then it may have maybe a little bit of this group here. All right. So what happens to C is, C is um, a little bit, uh, it has some of these characteristics, negative, neg oops, I'm negative, this is positive and this is positive, okay? Let me just correct this, okay? So this was negative. So you see C is a little bit of a mixture, no? It, it has some polarity and some non-polarity. So it's a little bit in between. So this is uh, not very polar, not very non-polar. So C is in between. So in terms of polarities, B is the most polar. And then, um, and then, and then A is the least polar and C is in between, okay? So what we're going to do is, what we're going to do is we are going to put uh, in all of this into a tube. Okay, so let's say we have a tube. Okay, let's say we have a tube here. We have a tube. We have a very long tube. Imagine you have a very long tube. Let's say the tube is, um, let's say two meters long. Okay? Two meters long. Two meters is roughly about six feet. Two meters long. Now in this tube, what we're going to do is we are going to put these particles in to this tube. All right, so we're going to fill up um, okay, forget about particles. Let's say marbles, okay? Marbles. Okay, so we're going to fill this entire thing with marbles. Okay, we're going to fill it up, right? 
okay now what i want to do is i want to show you one of these marbles let's take this one of these marbles out okay that's how the marble looks like and on the surface of this marble right what i what we're going to do is we're going to coat the surface of this marble with a liquid we're going to coat it with a substance okay let's say we're going to coat it with a substance now this substance contains all of these groups you see these groups again okay it contains all of these groups uh, ch3 here maybe it contains ch2 ch2 um, ch3 sorry ch3 uh, contains ch2 ch3 uh, contains ch2 ch3 contains ch3 so what we're going to do is we're going to coat the surface of this with a liquid uh, or uh, let's say something another chemical okay and this chemical that i quoted here if you notice all of these are hydrocarbons so which means that they are also non-polar so which means that every single marble that you're seeing here is coated with this green solid all right is coated with this green solid uh, so it's coated with this green substance uh, all right so now we are ready so if we look at this tube here okay so i'm just going to add one more page here okay how do i do this how do i do this okay okay here. all right so so what is going to happen here is now we have that tube right okay we're supposed to be here we're supposed to be here okay yes okay perfect so so what is going to happen now is we have this tube here right let me just let me just take this okay, here you go. all right so we have this tube here okay so at the bottom of the tube uh let's say we have um a tap okay we have a tap at the bottom here all right so right at the top here what we're going to do is we are going to introduce our sample so this is our sample just now okay this is our sample a b c so we're going to introduce our sample right at the top here so so this is our sample okay so we have a we have b we have c inside and inside of this this is a solvent okay we have a solvent so a and b and c are dissolved in a solvent now this solvent okay so what we're going to do is we're going to pour this at the top here so we're going to pour this at the top here when we pour this at the top what we sorry, we're going to pour this at the top here so when we pour this at the top right what we need to do is we need to continuously keep pouring more and more solvent all right we need to keep pouring more and more solvent at the top here so what is going to happen now is these components a b and c are going to start moving into this and then eventually at some point they are going to come out here okay at some point they're going to come up here so they're going to go through all of these marbles here huh? these marbles which were coated in um so i want you to use your imagination so these components a b and c are going to go at the right at the top and then they're going to come down here and one very important thing i want to tell you is you must continuously keep adding solvent you cannot let the top layer top part here to be dry so you keep adding solvent keep adding solvent okay so we put the sample and then we keep adding solvent so the sample is going to slowly come down all right it's going to come down so here's my question to you okay i told you the nature of each one of this told you the nature of each one of these components and i also told you the nature of this solid marble which is coated with this green gooey stuff here so which one of this will exit first and which one will exit last okay so the answer to this question is if you notice that both of these components right component a and the green stuff here okay this green stuff here and component a you notice that they carry the same types of groups they are both hydrocarbon so what will happen is a and the the solid marbles here will be interacting very strongly because they they can't speak the same language they are both hydrocarbons they attract each other meanwhile b which is a totally polar substance has gotten has nothing in common uh, with 
the marbles or the green stuff on the marble here because these are all hydrocarbons and C on the other hand has some things in common some things not in common it has some hydrocarbon groups has some polar groups so C interacts with the green the, the green the marbles not as much as A but not as little as B so what will happen is if you could notice right after a long while you will notice what will happen is okay now I, I forgot <laughs> what what you will notice is um sorry what you will notice is uh, 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 uh a kind of stays right at the top here most of the time okay and then b is uh b is already at the bottom here and c is somewhere here in the middle all right so so what will, what i mean is b will exit the 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 tubing first okay b will exit the tubing first and then as you keep pouring more and more solvent more and more solvent more and more solvent eventually what will happen is after b has exited then c will exit and finally a will exit a will be the last one to exit the tubing okay exit the tubing so by doing this what we have done is we have managed to separate a from b to from c okay so now i want to explain to you a few things here you see here in this picture here the marbles okay the marbles that we are using here these are called stationary phase okay stationary phase right. this stationary phase in this example it was a solid surface a solid surface which is the marble and then it was coated with a, another chemical so this chemical was a non-polar chemical all right so this is called the stationary phase in this case the solvent the solvent is called the mobile phase okay it's called the mobile phase because it's continuously moving stationary phase is not moving so chromatography is actually a separation technique okay whereby the components of a mixture have a relative affinity towards the mobile phase and the stationary phase relative affinity so in this example here c had a higher sorry what am i saying b had a higher affinity towards the mobile phase therefore it exited the tubing earlier meanwhile a had a stronger affinity towards the stationary phase so it stayed in the tubing longer and and c had uh, an affinity which was uh, either uh, more balanced either to the mobile phase and stationary phase oh so it took a uh, halfway time to come out from the column so to summarize what chromatography is chromatography is a separation technique based on the relative affinities of the components of a mixture either towards the mobile phase or stationary phase components which are more attracted to the mobile phase will usually move along with the mobile phase and components which are attracted to the stationary phase will move will be will be atta more attracted to the stationary phase and their movement would be much slower okay so that's basically what chromatography is all right it's a separation technique so on just before we end here what i showed you was i showed you that the stationary phase was coated with a, so a particular solid and the solid can be either polar non-polar or in between but another thing that we can do is we can also manipulate the mobile phase. The mobile phase can also be made to be polar or non-polar. So, so what we can actually do is we can actually manipulate the, even the mobile phase. So you manipulate the stationary phase and the mobile phase as well. So that's what we can do. Okay. All right. Let's stop here.